so bright. <laughs> it's like it's like staring into a goddamn angel. <laughs> no, like stare into an angel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all the times you just stare into an angel and you're like, wow, that angel's really bright. I wonder if they could turn that down. Let's turn that bad boy up. So we went and saw uh, Ben Hur. <laughs> if you're curious why we're just randomly gibbering at this point, we got nothing to talk about. <laughs> it's Ben Hur. <laughs> um, I've never seen the original, but uh, I have to assume it's the same from what Brian said about the Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't feel bad at all confessing that. Yeah, I've never gotten around to watching the the film classic <laughs> Ben Hur because. I just don't have that much fucking time. Uh, I'm sure it's everything that history tells me it is. History also tells me that Citizen Kane is a really good movie. And that's just not true. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know if I believe history. I've also never seen Citizen Kane. If you've got a problem with it, down there's the comments. Uh, no, I... It, it's one of the like Ben Hur is one of those movies that everybody's always like. It's like oh, it's 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 a classic film. Like it's one of the best films ever made. I've never heard a single person say that ever. Oh, this thing like I, I have heard them say that about Citizen Kane, which is why I'm concerned that uh, that apparently you it's hate it. It's not a good movie. What's wrong with it? It's fucking boring. It's a it's not supposed to be an action packed thriller. I've seen plenty of movies that aren't action-packed thrillers, but you know what they weren't? Not boring. <laughs> weren't not boring. <laughs> that weren't no man. <laughs> but anyway, no, like, it's, it's on, like, like, AFI's list. It's, like, the second best film ever made. Like Is the first one's in a skate? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh... No, it's like the year that it it came out, like it fucking swept the Academy Awards. Like mm. I think it picked up like fuck, like eleven Academy Awards. Like basically, if it was in a category, it won that category that year. Uh -huh. It won Best Chariot Race. <laughs> it won Best Jesus Cameo. It won Best Rubbing Shoe Polish on People to Say That They're a Chic. It's it won Best Hiring a Tan Person. Best Nebulous <laughs> Roman Accent. I just, at this point, like, give it another, like, hundred years when they look back on the films of, like, the past, like, century and they're like, it's like, oh, look at these historic works. They're like, clearly. All Romans were British. That is the main consensus held universally in film, is that Romans are British. We were talking about this outside, and I mentioned that it always reminds me of the Eddie Izzard bit about how no one knows what the fuck a Roman accent sounded like because it's a dead language, so they all just go for vaguely British. But he says, it's for, it's for all we know, their accent could have sounded like, I know where the Romans! <laughs> And so whenever I see a Roman person, I, just, I figure that's what they're going to talk like when they come out with, like, British, British talk. <laughs> they all sound like James Mason. Yes. <laughs> because that's one of two accents that Eddie Izzard can do. The other being Sean Connery. <laughs> they shoot across the water like that. Which... To make great photographs for the people in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Which I gotta say, like... Like, yeah, everybody in this goes the fucking Sean Connery route. If it's how you sound, that's how you sound. And just go with it. Yeah, Morgan Freeman shows up and you think that he's going to at least attempt at some sort of accent, but then he's like, so how long were you on a boat? Yeah, just doesn't try for an accent, doesn't like, at least like, like he had like a bit of like an affected accent in like Robin Hood. Uh -huh. In this, nope. He sounds like he's getting ready to do any movie where they're like, and the voice of Morgan Freeman. <laughs> And, th I, and that's honestly, it. Like, it's, it's, but like you'll have like two people who are like, it's like, oh, these two are brother and sister. It's so like, it's like, well, hello there, fair sister. How do you do this day? Oh, I'm fine. It's like, hmm. And mother? I don't have a Robin. I'm out of accents. Literally out of accents. But yeah, I was it, trying to help. I was trying. It's just it's all over the place. Like I don't I don't 
I'm terrible with with the guy's name, so I'm not going to attempt anybody's name. But uh, uh, the guy that plays Masala, he was uh, it, 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 shitty Doctor Doom in uh, the most recent Fantastic Four uh, failure, and like, yeah, like like these two brothers, like he's a he's adopted, but he apparently the way they make it sound, he was adopted young as an orphan. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, uh, a Jewish family of royal standing adopted this Roman orphan. And you can tell the difference between them because... The, you basically dress him in yeah, a even, completely Roman look. It's basically like if I adopted into like, a German child and dressed him in exclusively later Hosen. Because, yeah, like, they're, they're well into their, like... 20s mm-hmm. and uh, Judah Ben Hur dresses in just like flowing robes or occasionally blue jeans. He just he basically dresses like the stick'em felt guys that you played with in Sunday school, <laughs> and then and then yeah, uh, his his adopted Roman brother uh, Masala is going around with like the fucking nineties. You know, Tarantino, uh, fucking George Clooney, like, classic Caesar haircut, wearing outfits that are completely made out of, like, padded leather and everything. Like, it's like they went out of their way to, like, see how different these two are. This one looks like, you know, a gay biker, and this one looks like a gay tent. <laughs> a gay tent. I'm sorry, he has some very Technicolor dream coats. <laughs> It's to show how rich he was. But the the, <laughs> the the more wealth you have, the more color you can afford. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like they'd be in a scene together, like it's like Jude would be like, it's like, how is mother? And then his brother would be like, Mum. It's like but yeah, you do have a point. That he kept like swanning around in the Technicolor dream coats, but then the, like the next scene, he's wearing with basically like a long hoodie and blue jeans, because he's going riding. But then also he is because... straight up wearing fucking blue jeans. <laughs> he's wearing like blue jeans and a Henley. Like I thought it went into like Noah territory. Like oh, they just dress modern. Okay, <laughs> it's like did they forget to like put him in like something different? You know just like showed up on scene like fuck 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 I'm late put on a shirt I'm on a horse they won't be able to tell mm. it's like fuck I'm wearing like dungarees <laughs> so they're a big old family and like when we when when Brad texted me about it um, I was like oh the internet says it's two two hours thirty minutes and Brad's like no it says it's two hours even and so it turns out that depending on where you look on the internet is the length of this movie and so probably about thirty minutes worth was cut out between one website and the other and you could definitely tell in parts one of those parts being when they're setting up the family and all of a sudden he's married and the other one runs away yeah like there there were odd parts where like just uh, suddenly narration would take over. Like, like you'd go, like, like there was a big narrated part by Morgan Freeman at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then it sets into, like, a little piece where, like, we get to see the characters. Basically, everybody has their name said once. And then, like, ten minutes later, it just cuts to, like, a super fast montage that like moves us forward like three years. Yeah, I'm really glad you read that Wikipedia page because like ten minutes in, I leaned over. I'm like, who are all these people? Oh yeah, no, legitimately like, itch. Uh, that's it. <laughs> no, like, legitimately itch. Uh, no, like uh, the, the the movie like it. It seriously, it only says like everybody's name maybe once. Mm. Like even now, after watching this entire film, I still don't know what the fuck the sister's name was. I know that it started with a T, but they always said it really quick. I skipped and, to calling him Miss Sandy in my head. <laughs> and it was just it, it was an odd like old 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 school fucking name. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I still don't know what what her name was. Uh, the mother. Uh, when I was looking on the IMDb page, apparently she had a first name, but no one ever calls her anything other than mother. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why the fuck she was even named. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, w- without having read that Wikipedia page, 
I would have had no fucking clue what was going on in this movie because they don't spend enough time. Like, it's... It almost feels like... I mean, okay, granted, I know that it was a book and it's been done, like, ten times already. Like, the the Charlton Heston one is technically the remake of Ben-Hur. Uh-huh. Why did I know that? Yeah. Uh, But if you want to consider it, like, like, in comparison to, like... I guess John Carpenter's the thing. John Carpenter's the bender. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then I guess this would be like the like the new new one. Yeah, Mary Elizabeth Winstead <laughs> the thing. <laughs> Been her. Let me uh, find out where they met Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, it's I don't know, like it, it felt like it felt like the problem you have like when you have like a book and you try to condense it down or like a uh, sometimes even less like a book but like a like an entire like series, like a graphic novel or something like that, mm-hmm. that they try to condense down to movie volume, and there's just like stuff dropped out of it. Like that. That's how this movie felt. Like it felt like it wanted to hit all of the beats that were in the Charlton Heston one, and so since that one is almost fucking twice as long as this movie. There was just huge sections that were just down to almost nothing. Like, uh, like yeah, like like the whole like thing with him like falling for their family's handmaiden and marrying her, Esther. Mm-hmm. He basically gives her googly eyes across the room, and then her and her father are gonna leave, and he's like, "Okay, go. No way, don't go." And then they're married. And I definitely feel like there's probably some stuff that they cut out at the just for time's sake. So then, you know, shit goes down. The brother runs away to join the Roman army, comes back with the Roman army and doesn't understand why things have gotten out of hand. <laughs> like, I don't know why you guys think I'm a bad guy. Like, you just marched a fucking garrison of troops in here. Like, they are raping and pillaging as they go. Mm. It's like, yeah, but I'm... Like, like we're I'm like... I'm a good guy. Yeah, we're fam, why cuz. Why would it help me to help you? We're fam, cuz. He said we're fam, cuz. <laughs> And then Ben-Hur was like, what? And he's like, shut up, I'll stab you. So Ben-Hur is the family's royalty, but they're basically like a figurehead at this point, and Ben-Hur's having a hard time wrapping his head around it. But then, Yeah, because it's basically like, like, yeah, you guys are totally like ruling this town. But also but the But since we're chill, you guys Romans. are chill. And the Romans but are like, the Romans, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Give us your rocks for building a circus. But these are special rocks. I don't care, I want them. By these are special rocks, you mean that they were headstones and vaults yes. used to build tombs. They needed to build a circus, and the special rocks were the shiniest ones, so obviously they needed to steal them, and getting stabbed for it is a punishable offense. Because if you notice, too, in like some of the scenes later on, uh, whenever like Pontius Pilate is leaning... Oh, fucking Pacey from Dawson's Creek? <laughs> ...is leaning against... Uh, Leaning against some of the stones, talking like you can see, like there's like, like shit like Dearly written out. And, and stuff. Well, there's like shit written out in like Hebrew uh-huh. on it, so you can tell like like oh that was probably somebody's like grandpa. <laughs> like that's depressing that he's using that one to lean against. Yeah, while he, some like, of this movie was schmoozes. Stone Cold Bummer, but it was a Stone Cold Bummer at the time, so you know. But uh, Stone Cold, you see what I did there? <laughs> so anyway. Uh, Tikka Masala tried to convince Ben Hur to turn in all the rabble rousers. Ben Hur's like, I shall not. They're just rabble rousers. And Tikka Masala's like, they're punishable by death, rabble rousers. And then he gets. Well, it got like oddly pointed too, because he asks him, like, it's like, look, all right, my fucking boss is going to be here next week. No, I've asked you nicely. It's like, he is coming and he's bringing a lot more fucking guys than I brought. So if you could just, like, talk to the people and maybe tell them, like, hey, guy, like, maybe stop murdering uh, Romans and practicing, you know, sedition. And Judah Ben-Hur was like, yeah, okay, I'll talk to him. And then, like, later that day, he's like, so did you talk to him? Like, yeah, I did. It's like, okay, cool. Uh, So so who are all the traitors? (laughs) He's like, the fuck what? It's like... (laughs) All of the, all of the traitors, who who are they? Like 
legitimately, I am asking you to give me each and every one of their names, their address. No reason. I would just like to know who all of the people. No reason. It was basically. He he never. He never actually said why. But the implication was definitely so we can go and stick a sword right through their soft bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not saying that he denied (laughs) that. He didn't say yes, but he didn't say nay. Everyone knew what he was talking about. So he said, go talk to him. And Ben Hur's like, I talked to him. Most of them are on board. And he's like, okay. And the names of the not on board ones are. And Ben Hur's <laughs> like, go. Hold on. Let me, get a, let me get a quill here. Hold on. Okay. Go. It's like, which one's, which one's not on board? St- P- 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 Peter. Peter. Is there a Peter? Should I start? Tell me when to start. <laughs> the fuck aren't you talking? So anyway, long that story got a, short. That got a little heated for a second. Ben Hur ended up on a boat being one of the paddle guys. <laughs> long, long story short is That's Pontius, about how this movie did it. Long story short is that Pontius Pilate shows up with thousands of Roman centurions. Yeah. A uh, a religious zealot that. Okay, so Pilate told, <laughs> um, not Pilate. Ben Hur's sister was helping the zealots who don't want the Romans out of the city and were using all any means necessary to get rid of them. So they had like an injured one in their barn. Uh, ben Hur's like, okay, I'll fix this one, but get the fuck out of my barn. And so he was kind of staying in the house, get, letting his arm heal and f- fucking with the bows in the wall. And Ben Hur's like, don't fuck with those bows. Pontius Pilate's are coming to town. And so then everyone was all surprised when the <laughs> zealot that was living in their house and fucking with their bows took a bow off the wall was, yeah, and kept shot at Pontius a, Pilate. Kept in a room full of fucking weapons Mm -hmm. it's like really you just couldn't it's like oh man I found this injured fat guy and I'm gonna stick him in here in the kitchen I hope he doesn't eat everything I'll fucking eat everything (laughs) I'm gonna stick him in the pie depository (laughs) yeah the big pie room from uh great race yeah (laughs) it was a pie and also cake room as you'll recall because there was also a cake in that room it's important a cake a cake it was a big fuck off cake for the coronation. Oh, of course. <laughs> Natalie Wood ended up in it. <laughs> Leslie is the only one who was on skate. But uh <clears throat> Yeah, so so this kid uh takes a pot shot at uh at pilot. A pot shot pilot. No, <laughs> Pot, I was like, you can't just, do it. There's no way. There's a P in there, but that's I'm, it. I'm, that's all that's the same. I'm going to get there. There's a road, and I will follow it. Pot shot pilot. All, ro- all roads lead to Romans getting shot with fucking bows and arrows. So long story short, he ends up on one of the pa- one of so the paddle yeah, guys it, on a Roman boat. It, Ben-Hur is unwilling to say, oh no, it was that fucking kid over there that looks like the dancing kid from the fucking Step Up movies. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, his wife's father gets slashed to death by a sword. Which, can we, just real quick, can we discuss the zealot? Because this is one of those situations where, like, as a white person, you sit back and you think, is this racist? Because it feels a little racist. How the less sympathetic the characters were, the more swarthy and ethnic the <laughs> actors they hired to play them were. Because, like, you got your Ben Hur and your and your um, Masala as just pretty pretty much white guys, white guys with brown eyes. But then, then you get like oh the, yeah yeah J- Judah Ben Hur would pass like the paper bag test. Your zealot who's got like a speaking line and past that he's just stealing stuff and shooting people. No no he, he looks he, he has he has lines at the end. Uh huh. Oh that's right. Because he he's eventually being crucified. Because he it eventually turns out that he is Dismas. Uh huh. The oh you remember more about your Bible school than I do. I start with the stick and felt guys in their <laughs> outfits. There's Jesus, and then there was the the good thief and the jerk thief. Uh-huh. I think the jerk thief they just killed off before that scene even started. No, he was already dead. Yeah, fuck that guy. Uh, but it, it felt it felt racist. <laughs> it felt pretty racist. Anyway. Yeah, well, and especially like later on, whenever like they come back to Jerusalem, and. It's always like gray skies and bleak and cold, and everybody's like sitting out on the streets. Like they found the most like, like 
heavily ethnic t- people they could find to like have out there on the streets. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Meanwhile, like Esther's going around looking just positively radiant. She basically looks like a Kardashian. <laughs> like Esther's a Kardashian, right? Like she's got like this fucking like young like Catherine Zeta Jones thing going on. Mm-hmm. And, like, everybody else looks like shit. <laughs> and she's just there, like, like, I don't like think they light-skinned had, they and just They didn't have curlers glowing. back then. I promise that they didn't. She had a fucking straightener, I can tell you that. And they were laying in she bed together. She was flat ironing that like, hair. The light was hitting perfectly her one immaculate eyebrow. <laughs> she's got a guy she goes to and does the, the bitch, threading. eyebrows did not look like that back then. <laughs> eyebrows didn't look like that ten years ago. But yeah, so... And... and <sighs> Ben Hur up to this point looks like if you had a movie in which was like making jokes, like, oh, and there's Jesus, and he'd be like, ah, Buddy Christ. Like, that's how he looked. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, he gets uh, his, his wife's father fucking dead. Uh, his wife runs off and goes into hiding. Uh-huh. Uh, his sister, his and, his sister and his mother, they were supposed to get crucified. For as far as we know at this point in the movie, we're only like an hour into this movie at this point. We're like 20 minutes into this movie. <laughs> and then uh, Ben-Hur was sentenced to go be uh, a slave in a, a ship's galley. A paddle uh, man. Rowing Pad- all fucking day. A paddlesman? Getting, getting beaten. A bowswain. A coxswain. Sure. Yes. He was a coxswain on the paddle boat. And, and this is where the movie also has like weird math that you have to do because it opens at the beginning of the chariot race. Yes, 33 AD. 33 AD. And then, and then it goes immediately goes... Back seven years. It says eight years earlier. Uh-huh. But then after Ben-Hur gets uh, arrested and taken to to be a, a slave, then it says three years later. Mm-hmm. So you gotta really keep track of where this fucking movie is. And then it goes five years later. So, so we're, uh, we're again we're in back 33 to, AD. Yeah, back to where we started. He's but got long, scraggly hair. He looks he's like in... fucking Jason Momoa getting ready to play Aquaman. Like, he's got this, like, chiseled beard and, like, long fucking scraggly hair. And at this point, once he... Well, I mean, once he gets on land again... He switches over and only wears, like, very, like, very flattering, very form-fitting black leather, like, clothes under, mm-hmm. like, a huge, like... Because he's a Roman now. Top to bottom, uh, like, full-length, like, hoodie. Mm-hmm. But before that, he was, like... Like, he looks like, he looks like fucking Hasidic Batman. Uh-huh. <laughs> Before that, he was on the boat, though. It's like Batminch. And I want to mention the boat, because it's that, like... You're going to Batminch in the boat? I'm going to Batminch in the bat... The bat boat. Um, Because it's that that scene in, like, the Where's Waldo book, where Where's Waldo goes back in time, and it's it's got, like, the guys chained to the paddles. And it's always played for laughs nowadays. It did not look that mirthful there. It did not look like fun. Like, they did a pretty good job, I think, of portraying a sea battle where it's got, like... It's got the paddle guys, and then they're the they're the bosun obviously... fucking going crazy on that goddamn drum. Yeah, and then and they haven't put the chains in, so if the boat crashes, they'll all, they'll all die, I guess, to make them want to paddle harder. Um, Gives you some real motivation. And through the course of the battle, all the Romans on board the ship end up dying, and so which it is terrifying Momoa at a takes point charge. because at a point like. Uh, like, they're shooting flaming arrows in. They're pouring, like, hot tar all over the fucking place. The flaming arrows are hitting the tar. Like, the fucking bosun gets his... Like, he loses one of his mallets, so he's just, like, holding the drum in one arm and, like, hitting it with the other. And his fucking arm gets, like, covered in tar and flames Mm -hmm. so he's on fucking fire still just sitting there like it's like row you fucking bastards row just going at him like you are on fire that guy was not in the wall though (laughs) it's like this is fucked up like (laughs) but it was a fun that it was a fun scene i guess is why i wanted to revisit it (laughs) So anyway, he got... Uh, all this death and grim carnage. Judah Ben-Hur is dead inside. So anyway, Someone gets... gets, like, lashed behind him, and, the, like, the new guy sitting next to him was like, what should we do? He's like, just fucking row. Don't do anything. Just grit your teeth and don't fucking Conceal. Die. Don't feel. <laughs> 
Don't let them know. Also, he's Elsa. <laughs> So the Ice Queen. So anyway, he gets off the boat and becomes acidic Batman. You can go back to your rant now. <laughs> well, no, like he he, like yeah, the 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 boat goes down. He manages to loose himself from from his shackles, and is miraculously the only person to live through this sea battle. Uh-huh. And then he floats on the ocean for I don't know an afternoon or four weeks. He had like sun like. Speaking as, put it this way, if I was lost at sea, I would probably burn to death before anyone would ever <laughs> rescue me. So, like, I kind of, like, it, as far as his skin was concerned, he looked a bit the worse for wear, but he didn't develop, like, face sores until after Achu dragged him ashore. But you think, though, I mean, yeah, I mean, he was of olive complexion. Mm-hmm. Complected. But... You figured he'd be super fucking pale on account of living in the belly of a ship for five years. Hey, he browned up something something beautiful. <laughs> he basically like Dave. He basically he, he comes out into the sun and just brown. It's not like Letty and her whole family are like. It's like they look. Like, oh man, you're super pale. And then like, oh, it's springtime. Steps outside, comes back in. Oh, good tan. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> look like the blue lag- lagoon up in this piece. But uh, but yeah, he he ends up washing ashore on. Most of a mast and ends up basically looking. I mean, it's some definite fucking Christ imagery while he's mm-hmm. floating out there. Yeah, but he wasn't Jesus because Jesus is already in this movie. Yes, because we have at this point in the movie met Jesus a couple times. I think we don't know he's Jesus yet. Wink. But they were talking about the problems of the Romans, and they heard from the side like, "I think that we should just try to be nice to everybody." And then they glance over like, "Whoa!" And it's this guy just like, like nonchalantly who? hammering a door together. Like, I think maybe we should just turn the other cheek. How about you guys? Just, just over there with like a plane, just like scraping off some wood. Like, oh hey guys, I'm just some. I'm just a just some really sculpted, chiseled, handsome looking carpenter. <laughs> Anonymous tradesmen, go about your business. I could be literally anybody. (laughs) It's like, what (laughs) year is it again? Almost Almost the year 33. Hmm. Well, bye, guys. (laughs) And then he comes back like, we should be nice to him. Here's some water. You'd do the same for me, I'm sure. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. So anyway, um, he gets dragged ashore by Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman's like, I'm going to turn you over to the Romans. He's like, don't do that. I'll fix your horse. Morgan Freeman's like, fine. You belong to me now. <laughs> and so they become like, best friends. Gave you my, I, and they like, go back to I, Jerusalem. I gave you your life. I expect the bill to be paid. <laughs> I don't understand why. It was, it was kind of a Dread Pirate Roberts thing. Where it's kind of like, I'm going to kill you. Ha ha! <laughs> but not today. <laughs> I'm very likely to kill you in the morning. So he takes him to Jerusalem, and Ben Hur goes all Count of Monte Cristo. In that, he, is, he gets a really big, delicious sandwich. Yes, he gets a very big, <laughs> delicious. They didn't invent sandwiches back then. You big silly. Just get the uh, you put the uh, unleavened bread in the unleavened bread leavenator. You're doing a Mr. Show reference? Yeah, it's from the Book of Marshall. I remember the Book of Marshall. <laughs> A lemon bread eliminator. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, they. What number am I thinking of, Jesus? <laughs> but uh, so they... he tracks down. It turns out his mom and his sister are dead. So he thinks. He tracks down his wife, and she's all like, "Yay, we're still married." Wait, you want vengeance? Okay, we're not married anymore because apparently that's how that works. Yeah, back she then. ain't fuck with vengeance. Oh, uh, because she's kind of like, she's in the Jesus. Jesus is my Mary Chain. Um, <laughs> Right now, and since Ben Hur is more about like, uh, there's no spit God. On what? <laughs> spit on yourself. No. You, you, when you, did, you made your amazing Jesus Mary Chain reference. Well, I'm sure it didn't show up on camera, so I appreciate you calling me out on it. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I picked up. I'll spit up. on you next time. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I spit on you just now? In case the camera didn't pick it up, I want to make sure everyone knew about it. Anyway. So she's she's speaking to Jesus, and he's not so much. He's more into, like, the vengeance. So he's going to go into a chariot race with his brother, and probably, I guess the plan is to shame him to death? Well, at first he wants to death him to death. Uh-huh. 
like he uh, he does like a very coy thing of uh, apparently like whenever like they got ousted from their house and sent to fates worse than death, uh, everybody just like all right, well I guess lock the door and no one go in here ever again because all their shit is still in that house, just cobwebby, mm-hmm. and uh, right before all this shit went down. Uh, Masala had given Ben Hur his sword. Yes. Uh, and it's like, said, uh, hey, you know, show me who those detractors are. And it's like, also, you're my bro. It's like, I want you to have this sword in hopes that I never have to use it again on account of I have murdered so, so, so many, many people. native people. Apparently, he learned his lesson because he said it was like <sighs> that they, you know, destroyed the freedoms of indigenous people simply because they were different from him. And now we're going to do it again. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was perfectly fine explaining that, but even Ben Hur was like, "That's cool, man. That's really cool. I'm glad you're back, though. I am glad you are back, though." <laughs> yeah, like he he has a uh, a messenger. Had the up because the bugs were gonna get in, but it is too <laughs> hot. It's too hot, and I'm getting cranky. Uh, he sent a messenger with like his his brother's sword to like deliver it to him to be like guess who ain't dead motherfucker now where's my mother and mother and sister I don't know ah clock him (laughs) yeah so then he's uh yeah he 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 tried the direct approach to kill him that didn't work so the next option is Morgan Freeman tells him like bruh but how about this chariot race chariots chariots it's like, nah, man, you're you're all about fucking money. Like, it's nice to know that greed motivates all. He's like, you don't fucking know me, man. <laughs> it's like, like, except that they, they murdered my son, so, like, I've, I've done this all before. It's like... I'm old, you're young, you're dumb, I'm smart. <laughs> so, like, it's like I, I hated Romans. I wanted to kill all the Romans. Guess what? There's too fucking many of them. You cannot kill all the Romans. But you can kill one in a chariot. <laughs> but how about this, though? He's the pride of the Roman Empire. Take their pride. Shame like, him to death. Like, that's actually a decent plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, thinking of it, is the exact same plan that's been used in several other movies that are almost exactly identical to this that mm-hmm. have come out over the years. Like, Gladiator. Beer, the, beer the, Fest. The legend... <laughs> beer Fest. <laughs> <laughs> the Legend of Hercules. Uh... uh Pompeii. I'm just trying to think of other like swords and sandals movies. Not necessarily. I'm thinking of like not necessarily beer fest. Defeat the rich guy team. Karate Kid. <laughs> but, Remember uh, in Karate Kid. <laughs> they swept the leg. Like, but he uh, took his pride. Because no can defend. Uh. So anyway, chariot race, which we were anticipating would take like. 45 minutes because it's the entirety of the previews, but it ended up only being like 15, 20 minutes worth of the movie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely longer than, than the original one, mm-hmm. but, uh... And it's entirely in CG. Like, I don't think there was a sim- single element to that chariot race that was actually on, on the screen. Well, it was actually being filmed, I guess I should say. Well, I almost have to wonder if the... If the chariot race is what sold the director on this, because this was from the the director, uh, I, I'm terrible with his name uh, because it is crazy, crazy, crazy Russian. Uh, but it was done by the same guy that did uh, Wanted, uh, Day Watch, Night Watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he also did the Green Hornet movie. Uh, like he goes for like like. His thing is like crazy, crazy over the top, like visual stuff. Like he was, yeah, like like wanted, you know, the whole like like fight scenes that are like super like long and like detailed with like them mm-hmm. like bending bullets around Angelina Jolie and shit like, like that. He kept doing like horse cam and ground cam and Morgan Freeman cam to see what Morgan Freeman was up to, and dust cam, and he was really, really invested in showing us how hard it was for Ben-Hur to see what was going on because of the dust. Because it seemed like a thing would happen, and then we cut to Ben-Hur going like eh, 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 eh. and then another thing would happen and you cut to Ben-Hur like eh, eh, eh. Well, and I almost wonder if that, because I was I was reading some stuff about the original, and they had to make 
special hard contact lenses for Charlton Heston to wear mm -hmm. in, in like the it I mean it's not the original but in the fuck original you, the original Ben Hur. Uh fuck you, no one was arguing with you. Well the, the, I know there's gonna be actually it's not the original. Fuck you, actually, There was a guy. silent one made back in 1927 or some bullshit. Like, I, don't, I don't fucking care. The one that everyone knows. Mm -hmm. uh, like, when I say the thing, I'm talking about the fucking John Carpenter one. You should don't say be John Carpenter's the thing. Because <laughs> that's the... You should get called John Carpenter's the thing. Anyway. Uh... Like, I know in that one, like, they had to make some special contact lenses for, for Charlton Heston to wear because, uh, all the grit flying at him so that they could, like, film him from the front and he actually have his fucking eyes open. Mm -hmm. That had to be weird, though. Can you so, imagine just dirt bouncing off the glass <laughs> in your eyes? But I almost wonder if that's the reason why they did a lot of that, like, like definitely showing that he could not see there was just fucking grit in his face. Uh -huh. Uh, like they also kept in like like it, it's it's one of the big moments in like the the chase like the chariot race scene uh, in the Heston one is when in that one like Ben Hur falls off his chariot and like struggles and like climbs his way back up and it's like yeah because that was like entirely like uh, an accident that they worked into the film uh huh because uh, I guess uh, the the guy that they had doing like some of the 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 chariot shots like one of the stunt guys they had working on it mm -hmm. during one of the takes like it hit like a, a bump or something and it actually like like one of the horses spooked and it bucked him off of the chariot in the charlton heston one yeah okay when they were filming and uh kind of dragged him for a second uh and they're like it's like well we can't use that shot but then they're like, wait, what if we work that into it? So then they just added in a couple, like, like close-up shots of, like, Charlton Heston being dragged, arms on the thing, huh, back up. Da -da 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 so they... Yeah, because in this movie, they, they explain it by, like, when he's climbing his way up, they keep, like, flashing back to when he was oarsmaning to be like, his arm's so strong because he was an oarsman for five years. It's coming and he's in handy. fueled by pure hatred. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of is. And it kind of... Before he finds Jesus, literally and figuratively. It kind of bugged me, though, like, the, uh... Because he's being dragged, like, several feet behind his chariot as it's going. And he's still holding on to, like, the handle grips on the uh, the reins. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that when he was on, like, standing up on the chariot, his arms straight out in front of him like that was the very ends of the reins. So I was like, are they fucking bungee cords? Like, Maybe it's like, like those dog leashes where you push the button and it goes... <laughs> It's like, you know, apparently there was just an extra, like, 15 feet of slack that he he wasn't showing us. Mm-hmm. Potentially. Also, he, I, I, I loved, too, like, in the chariot race, that, uh, so that you could tell which, which region each of the, the different racers was from, each one of them just looked like if you drew a racist caricature <laughs> of someone from that area. Yeah, they had, like, they had... Basically, uh, Jason Manzoukas. They had a Viking. They had, uh, who else did they have? Yeah, like the Viking guy had like long flowing, like blonde hair and like. And a Viking hat. Uh, yeah, the, the Greek guy just looked like fucking Manzoukas. Uh, -huh. uh the, uh, the Egyptian guy looked like they fucking stole Yul Brenner and stuck him in there. <laughs> And he had a super Egyptian type chariot because it's important to have a theme. Yeah, well, and then, yeah, like, then, uh, it's like, it's like, oh, representing, you know, like, the Judaic people, Judah Ben Hur. And he pulls up with four dazzlingly bleached white stallions. With white with reins. All white bleached leathers, like, every, like, white on white on white fucking mm -hmm. ice cream paint job on that bitch. Yes. It's a song. Ice cream paint job. Well, okay. Like a big I, well, we looked up pictures, and that's what he looked like in the in the remake. And then Masala is being... Like a black, black on black on black. <laughs> fucking 
black horses, black gear, black chariot, all black leather. Like, it's like, oh, so good guy, bad guy. Wow, fucking subtlety here. Make it easier to see through the dust. <laughs> Make it easy to tell which ones are which. And then everybody else is just, yeah, bullshit. So the race and Ben Hur wins. <laughs> I'm getting sick of talking about this movie. Like, this, this, the description is taking just as long as the freaking movie did. Although it's fantastic, though, like, uh, when the, when the race is over, uh, they're like, like, Ben Hur is like he's looking sad over, he's his like, horse died. yeah, he's sad about like the, one, like the horse died that he like nursed back to health. And he's sad about his brother because uh, they are still, he does still love he, him. He's got this ambiguous look on his face. I, I could not tell like if he was face. sad or if he was happy. I think it was because he saw that his brother was not faring so well, and I think he wanted to go to him, but he couldn't because he was being borne off oh, by his Oh, he looked of dead. Fans. He thought he was dead. He sort of said, I've killed my brother. Uh-huh. And, like, the crowd, like, he's trying to, like, get over to, like, Masala's mangled body. Mm -hmm. And the crowd's like, psych, picks him up and, like, carries him away. And then he looks over, and they've also picked up Masala. I'm just kind of, like, waggling like, him around. <laughs> Like waving his fucking arms, he was like, like, "Yeah, king in the north, me, 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 me." Like his head just fucking rolling around, <laughs> shit. Like, well, that's got to be jarring. <laughs> it's like, yes, I beat him, oh, but it was my brother. Looks over, and that's when they've we turned our him into lesson. a fucking marionette. Like, because Morgan Freeman goes over to Pilot, and he's all like, "Oh, I'm sorry for your loss." And Pilot's like, "Loss? Look at these motherfuckers. They love the blood. They're all Romans now." And it's like kind of a bum bum bum. Then he Meanwhile, takes off looking like Jesus. He takes off like I loved his outfit in that last scene though. Uh, he looked like fucking Nero in that uh, uh, that one uh, Bruno Mattei film we did that time. Uh, Hitler oh, where he kept walking in on his wife fucking some dude. Hitler reincarnated as Nero. Wait, which one? Which one am I thinking of? That's the one where he's up there like, it's like, Rome is burning. Like, playing his little, like... People are dying. But no, the one, because what was his wife's name? Uh, Messalina. Yeah, and... I think? No. I thought... Because he, he, was, he was walking in, I thought it began with a C. And they'd be like, hey, you know, I got some news for you. And he's just, the wife's like, fucking some dude. And he's like, aww. Wah, wah, wah. It does that, like, four <laughs> I times. I think I'm thinking of the other one, Caligula and Messalina. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds right. But, uh, but yeah, also, uh, I was, I was looking on that guy, like, like, yeah, he looked a lot like fucking Pacey. He wasn't Pacey, but he looked exactly <laughs> like Pacey. Although I was not surprised when I looked, I'm like, oh, one of his credits on here is he was on uh, Game of Thrones as a Greyjoy. I'm like, <laughs> I can see sense. him. He looks like a Greyjoy. Like, like, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, hey, I'm with it. I follow. <laughs> you, don't, you don't look like he's so. <laughs> but, uh. So anyway, Jesus. Let's, let's do the Jesus-y but bit. Then, like, yay, the the race is over. Judah ben her won, and he's, he's now, like, cleared in the eyes of society. And then the next scene is them uh, Beating ambushing Jesus, Jesus. Down the street. Like, it literally cuts to the fucking woods, and you're like, where the fuck are they're, they're we? They're in the Garden Jude of Gethsemane, my friend. Uh, and like you just kind of see like like someone standing there, and, like he kind of stands up, and, like, oh okay, it's Jesus, and a dude just walks up, and, like, centurions. It's like ah, oh, betrayed him with a kiss. <coughs> so you can remember then, the name of the bad the bad thief, but if there's if they sing about it in Jesus Christ Superstar, <laughs> then I will remember that shit. Because on Thursday night you'll find him where you want him, far from the crowds in the Garden of Geth. So there's no song about St. Dismas? Nope. Oh, that's depressing. <laughs> you want to know why? There might be the second the second side of the second disc I don't tend to listen to because it's mostly just them whipping Jesus for 20 minutes. Just one, bam, 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 and up two, bam, 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 and up three, bam, 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 and up four. <laughs> That must be really long, because there was like 40 lashes. There absolutely was 40 lashes. Twee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-hee-
No, honestly, the only reason I remember St. Dismas is because uh, uh, the cross of St. Dismas is a, like a huge, like, like main story point in uh, Uncharted 4. Oh, that's why you know that <laughs> shit. <laughs> if they sang about it in an Uncharted game, exactly. then Brian will know that shit. But, uh... Uh... Yeah, it, it cuts to them there, betrayed with a kiss, swarmed. Peter's all like, stabs? And Jesus is like, no stabs. Hard cut. Now we're walking through the streets of Jerusalem. He's Christ basically doing the exact bloody. same thing that Ben-Hur like, was doing, but with a comically huge bar. And uh, and it, it basically, in, in the hard cut, there was the entire movie Passion of the Christ. <laughs> and, and at this point, like like... A movie like this, it feels like like the race should have been the finale. So now it just feels like we're starting Act Four, because mm-hmm. where the movie should end, it still has like twenty more minutes to go. So then we basically go through the entire end of every Jesus movie, mm-hmm. but with Judas Ben Hur saying they're like, "What? No! What? No!" And it turns out, yeah, Ben Hur is the guy who tries like offering him water as he's going through the streets. Mm-hmm. Uh, He's gonna throw a rock at the Romans. Jesus is like, don't do that. Just be, be, be cool. Be cool. Be cool, bro. Be cool. And then he we gives f- his line. We fall. Yeah, we follow him up to uh, Golgotha, where like he ends up getting crucified, and like Ben Hur and and his wife are having a tender scene up there after like you know like it is finished. Storm starts. They're having a, a moment up there to themselves, but if you look in the background, like you can see, like, like, Jesus fucking, like just hanging there. Well, like, it, they're all back there, but they're like uh, huddled in front of him. You can see, like, Mary Magdalene and, like, Peter. And, like, like the, the Bible story is happening behind them. They're mm-hmm. just sitting right in front of it. Like, it's having like a it's tender a moment. Well, it's, it's like when you have, like, a TV show that's about fucking time travel, mm-hmm. and they're like, it's like, oh, man, we need to make sure not to mess anything up. And then, like, in the background, like, they're getting ready to, like, you know, like, it's like, it's like, quiet. We need to make sure we don't do anything to, like, it's like, mess up the speech. And then in the background, you see Lincoln, like, four scores. And, like, oh, okay, that's happening. That's back there while they're over here, like, fucking around, like, you know. Like, it felt like that. Like, like you guys shouldn't be here. <laughs> Like, you, this is not your thing. You're just, like, five feet away from, like, the Bible story happening. Uh-huh. But, uh... Yeah, so so that's going on. It starts raining. Uh, Ben-Hur's mom and sister, who are stuck in, like, a leper colony, get, like, rained on, and they're magically just... It's like, oh... We are cured. Yeah, that was the only part of the movie I found actively annoying, was them getting the leper curing rain on them and being like, oh, we're cured. Like, literally said that out loud to each other, in, in case you weren't sure. In that tone of voice, like, oh, we're cured. It's like, ain't this just the damnedest thing to happen today? We are no longer fucking lepers. Yep. Meop. I hope the rain also put on whatever body parts that had fallen off of them at this point. I hope point. the rain summons Morgan Freeman to know what, exactly what room we're in and know that he can buy us. Oh, it, it does. Yay! <laughs> he shows Hooray up. for God and Jesus! He shows up immediately and buys them as soon as they are now clean. So the moral of the story... Okay, so he goes and he finds his brother, too. It turns out that he's alive. He just lost his leg. And he is super pissed about it. He's all mad. He's like, I'm going to get whole again. I'm going to stab you. And his brother's like, don't stab me. I love you. And he's like, I love you, too. I missed you so much. And he's like, I missed you so much. And so then they go and live happily ever after. And then, yeah, like, like Ben-Hur, like, apparently patched things up with his wife. His mom and his sister are now alive, fantastically dressed, and back in... In Jerusalem. The sister's wearing a wig, I'm pretty sure. Because her hair is looking like super Kardashian-y in that, in that scene. Uh, they, everybody is just... Like, life is good. Like, everything panned out great for everyone. Except for uh, Jesus and uh, Esther's dad. Who is still a corpse because he was murdered by the Romans. And the bad... Well, like the bad thief and the good thief... 
The 20 freaking Jews that they murdered because he punched his brother in the face. All the people that got run over by chariots. The people in the stands, when that one horse got up into the stands and just started going murder crazy on everyone. <laughs> no, As murder you horse. recall. Bad is the answer, the great great ancestor of bad horse. <laughs> bad horse. Uh, you know who this movie turned out great for? Mm. Uh, Barabbas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his ass just didn't even come up. Give us Barabbas! Alright. So anyway, I, I don't know, I'd recommend it. I don't think it was his, his summer flop bad. I mean, it's definitely, like, for... I think the problem that, uh... I mean, it, it's boring, and it, it, at times, like, it feels like there's a faith film going on behind it. Like, like you could easily splice this movie together with, like, that Risen movie mm -hmm. and Son of God to, like, fill in the in-between parts to see what the fuck's up with Jesus. It was very Son of Godsy. Like, like, it wasn't like... You could, you could splice those two and this one together and have, like, some massively boring seven-hour movie... Oh, but could I, I could I really? I feel that you could easily fucking do that, but I, I think like the, the also... biggest problem with this is that it's just considering all like the the hype and everything that's still given to the original that I know isn't the original. Uh, I think that that's detrimental to this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like every time there's a new like, well, like Affleck. As Batman. Every time there's a new Batman or, you know, uh, or more recently, like, Jared Leto, you know, as the Joker in the couple of scenes that they left in Suicide Squad. Uh, you're always compared to what came before it, and unfortunately, like, like, it's not like this is a remake of, like, a movie from the 80s that was okay, but really dated, and they decided to, like, bring it up to, up to current. Mm -hmm. Like, this was a big budget movie, like the biggest movie ever made at the time that it was made, that swept the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Like, this thing like set a record for most Oscars that wasn't toppled until fucking Titanic came along. Uh -huh. So it held that title for like 40 fucking years. And then this is a remake of that kind of movie. It's like, it's, it's, never going to be good enough for people who are looking at it. Like, like the couple times that they've tried making things that, like, tie into, like, the Godfather movies. You know, whether it's, like, a... I think there was, like, a made-for-TV rendition of it, or, you know, different things like that. Like, I think there's a... Uh, there was that one movie with uh, Christopher Lambert, the Sicilian, which is technically a tie-in to the Godfather movies that was panned. Mm -hmm. That yeah, it's like whenever you're you're competing against like that's the pedigree that that name has, like you're gonna fucking lose every time. And so I, mean, I would not recommend this. It's it's fairly boring, and if you want to watch like fucking you know Gladiator times things, like there's plenty of other ones out there to watch that are that'll fill that for you that are way more fucking entertaining. Like Dwayne Johnson's Hercules. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was fine. If you feel the need to watch Ben-Hur, but like an hour shorter and way more <laughs> an CGI. An hour and a half shorter. An hour and a half shorter. Uh, previews. Billy Lynn's long halftime walk. I have, I have no, no idea what fucking that clue what that was about. It was like scenes of... The Super Bowl halftime show intercut with Black Hawk Down. Like, I have no fucking clue what that movie was supposed to be about. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was an advertisement for the army for the first three-fourths of it, so... Do it, do, it, do, it, do, it, do it that as you will. It's got Case 2 in it. Uh, Birth of a Nation. Which I, I think still looks good. Like, I've seen... I'm getting sick of that preview. I've seen quite a few, like... Like... Civil War movies here in the past like two years, mm -hmm. like it almost seems like 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 they're like it's one of those things like like sometimes like you end up with like like they're in like the late nineties like every couple months was like another big disaster film and then like we kind of stopped making disaster films for a little bit because there were fucking just too many of them. Mm -hmm. And, like, I feel like, like, here in this, like, like the past couple of years, like, there's just been a shitload of, like, these, like, Civil War, like, right at the cusp of, like, slavery being done with movies that, like, 
Like there's just that one with uh, uh, Free State of Jones. Yeah, this is how I can't even remember the name of it, and I just saw it a couple weeks ago. Uh, like honestly, yeah, like uh, this like Birth of a Nation looks like, almost exactly like Free State of Jones, except focusing on like the the black people. God forbid. Well, yeah. <laughs> But no, like, like it, it seems like if it was focusing on uh, McConaughey's friend throughout that one, as opposed to focusing on McConaughey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sully. The, the Sully Sullenberger film. This is the movie that Brian <clears throat> leaned over to me and with great relish and super proud of himself said, I must ask you a question. I'm sorry, but... Between between Tom Hanks and Aaron Eckhart's amazing mustache. Because they're pilots. <laughs> like, Aaron Eckhart looked like really jacked Ned Flanders. So I guess just Ned Flanders when he takes his shirt off. Yep. <laughs> Not my like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, that one, like... I don't know, like... like this doesn't seem a little soon. Like, it just happened, didn't it? Well, no, but my thing is, like... it. Uh, remember that movie? It came out last year. Uh, I think it was just called Flight. Uh-huh. Uh, that one about like Denzel like like performing like a miracle landing with a plane and all the like and it was all about like the background like like you know like inquiries and 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 you know panels and stuff that went on like around like that happening like that movie felt like it was done in response to like the whole like miracle on the Hudson event mm-hmm. and then now coming out with a movie about the miracle on the Hudson. It's like, we've already, like, I feel like, it's, like, that was the first time I've seen that trailer, and I feel like I've already seen that trailer. Yeah, pretty much. Well, because, again, we are there when it happened. It was just a couple years ago. Anyway, same kind of, some, same kind of difference as me, which is like a Jesus-y looking thing. Oh, right, right. That was that one starring uh, Renee, Renee Zellweger's Zellweger. new face. And, uh, and what's his face? Which, and they, they like, they holy, adopt a black guy. Holy shit. What? Renee Zellweger's face. She's aged since. She, I until I heard her voice, I did not know that was her. Uh huh. See, this this was like a huge to do a couple years ago. And I was like, oh my god, what happened to Renee Zellweger's face? And she was like, I got older, you guys. Why are you being so mean? Like it doesn't. It's not even like the same fucking shape though. Val Kilmer, my friend. Sometimes people's faces just do that. And sometimes it's because they've gotten plastic surgery and then age behind the plastic surgery. Fucking Hollywood. I don't know. I'm disinclined to call her out as being Frankenstein's monster for it. Well, no, no, I'm not saying that. It's just, I just legitimately, until I heard her voice, did not know that that was her. Mm-hmm. Like, looking dead on at her face, I did not know that was her. But, I don't know. This is me. Yeah, it, I was more enthralled with the fact that this is a movie where, like, a husband cheated on his wife, and she's she says, leave if you want, it's up to you, and he's trying to figure out whether he wants to leave the wife that he cheated on, and they both decide to adopt a homeless man. And that's the plot of this movie. <laughs> from, the, from what the preview says, that's the plot of this movie. It's like if... And the homeless man teaches them how to learn and laugh and love again. It's like if... The Blind Side was a faith-based film. <laughs> and instead of, like, a football play in high school, it's an old homeless man. Yep. With anger management problems. Horrible anger management issues. He, like, he throws a chair through a plate glass window in this preview. But then he helps her clean it later. Yeah, that's when she buys so that's a new nice one. He's, he's Paul Rudd in Wet Hot American Summer. Um, Arrival? That one reminded what me. Was that one. Uh, that was that one. Uh, uh, Amy Adams going up into the. All oh, right, that one looks good. Monolith. She's like she's a trans lady type person, and then the aliens come, and so they hire her to translate the aliens. It it reminded me of a lot of those movies that came out, uh, kind of rapid fire, uh, there in the nineties, uh, like Contact, mm-hmm. and uh, it, re- it reminded me a lot of Contact, like Sphere. Uh, the Arrival. Like, it, it reminded me of, like, those films. So, I'm like, I don't know. I could, I could be okay with this. Mm-hmm. Doctor Strange. This is the Looks first preview for cool. Doctor Strange I've seen where he's actually doing magic. Because all the other ones I've seen, he was, like, doctoring stuff. And at the very, very end of the preview, they're like, how about some magic? And he's like, yeah, okay. 
Like, yeah, I can fuck Let's with some do magic. It. This is all like I think we had a 3D glasses on and like reality was shattering and Swinton was like, come on to this side of the mirror. It was extra like, Swintony. Yeah, okay, she's the Swintoniest. Um, and the Great Wall. <laughs> Which. Last, last Samurai too. Yeah. <laughs> when all else fails. It's like a whole to do. Yeah, it, it's the sort of thing that, like, a lot of, like, Asian actors have been up in arms about it. The thing is, isn't the but, movie made by a Chinese fellow? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, well, the, the problem is, is that the Asian markets. Uh, uh, China specifically, it's like the big like, like basically, if you want your movie to do well, it has to do, it has to do big in the states. It has to do big in China. Uh huh. And Chinese people don't like Chinese people. That if, can't be right. Well, no, it's it's the if they're if they want to see a big Hollywood movie, they want to see a big Hollywood white uh-huh. actor leading it. Like, uh, uh movies. Like, smaller and crappier American movies can do better in China than bigger, more well-made and well-acted Chinese movies in China. Uh-huh. Based on the fact that they don't want to go see... It's, like, basically the opposite of most people's opinion here in America, where they're like, it's like, I don't want to see some imported film, like, I'll wait till they remake it. Like, you know... Like how most people over here, like, like how, like there were people walking out of the theaters whenever, like, uh, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon came out because they're like subtitles in a theater. I think bullshit. But it still did well. Well, yeah, but I'm saying like, like overseas, they would rather see an imported film with like. He killed that mosquito. Yeah, with. Thank you. They would rather see oh, still up there. an imported film. With uh, with American actors in it, than to see a you know a local film of theirs with actual Asian actors in it. Mm -hmm. That's why like 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 yeah like like big budget American movies do fucking amazing overseas. Uh, that's why it's always such a like a, such a huge blow to certain films when they don't get approved to be screened in China. Mm -hmm. Like that basically cuts like. The uh, the the global take for it in half, and there's there's a bunch of weird qualifying rules you have to meet in order for a movie to get released over there. Uh -huh. Like what I think like one of the big things like they don't like movies set over there that have to do with like like ghosts, like superstitious type like magical stuff. Like uh -huh. they don't like that kind of stuff getting released over there, or stuff that's like. Like, specifically, like, anti, you know, People's Republic type stuff. And this is why they made uh, the Ancient One be Tilda Swinton. Instead of a Tibetan fella. Well, no, that, that was more of just a casting choice. Because, like, they were looking for about anybody. And this sort of thing was like, well, it's this basically, you know, ancient mystical figure. Like, you know, maybe it looks, you know, sort of thing looks different to every person. I don't mm, know. I thought it was because of the whole Tibet thing. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> free, free Tibet, Myanmar. I don't. I don't keep up with stuff uh, like this. So I basically, I, I know the opinions that have been said at me, and I seem to recall it. Someone was telling me that it's because, like, if you have someone be Tibetan, it means that you are calling Tibet a country, and China ain't too happy about that. Yeah, they're not a huge fan of some stuff like that. Like, I think because of that, like Ace Ventura Two didn't get released over there. What? They missed Ace Ventura 2? Because that whole Colin when nature calls? Because that whole scene at the beginning where he's a monk. Yeah. After the cliffhanger uh, parody where he let the raccoon fall to his death. But no, it's and just then like... he becomes a monk and then he gets a slinky and he lets the slinky to go down the stairs. Cushion me about Ace Ventura 2 colon when nature calls. Uh but yeah, yeah, no, just, just, yeah, just, as it goes, like, yeah, they, movie, like, big budget movies with American actors do better over there than big budget movies with Asian actors. So they would rather see, like, a big budget movie about their own history and then starring Matt Damon as opposed to, like, a big budget movie starring their own people and then, like, 
you know, like a big name, like Chinese actor. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter how big they are, because it's like, oh man, you're you're, you're a huge actor over here, but he is Tom Cruise, or you know, like she is Angelina Jolie. We'd rather see her in this than like like you know. It's just, it's a weird weird dynamic because yeah this this movie's getting a lot of heat for it but yeah it it was like made by a Chinese director written by them like I think it was filmed over there because mm-hmm. it's notoriously hard to get permits to film in China too I think uh-huh. uh the yeah it's it's basically like oh yeah we're gonna make like you know a movie like fucking like Redwall or something like that but then also starring a white guy. Redwall? It's a, it's a big Chinese like wushu epic film. So not okay. It's not Brian Jacques Redwall with the mice. No. And Clooney the Scourge. I have no idea. That what makes more sense. No. What? What? It's a book about a, it's called Redwall. It's about an abbey full of mice, and then like this pirate rat comes in across, and he's lays siege to him. It's a really good book. It was one of my favorites when I was growing up. I think up. I vaguely know what you're talking about. Yeah. The, M- M- Matthias? Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with you now, I'm with you now. Yeah, yeah. Come watch the shit of a Redwall movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Or I think it was called Red Cliff, maybe? I can't fucking remember. Red something. <laughs> My final thought is I want to see a Redwall movie now. <laughs> My final thought is... It's gonna be good, they can make little CGI mice, he can have his little sword. It'd be exactly like the Tale of Despero, and then no one will go watch it. No, exactly it'd be like better the than the Tale of Despero. Despero. They actually made a Redwall movie, but it was in like the eighties, so it was all like, it was just a cartoon, like rotoscoped, looked like like a was it a Watership Down? Yeah, I think so. That sounds right. I didn't really watch it. I read the book shit ton though, and the sequels, and then Brian Jacques turned out to be kind of a racist. Oh well. <laughs> Bye.